Hey guys, so this is here bringing you another video. Now today's extra video is a league discussion. Uh, it's one that people have asked me to do for a little while now, because uh, basically certain pros and personalities have come out the woodwork and kind of give their opinions about league in its current form, and especially with viewership with the pro scene. And I thought I I'd do it. You know, people have asked me, you know, what do I think? And also this gives you guys a platform to what you think. So in the comment section, let me know what do you think about what people have been saying. And, you know, did you used to watch the pro scene and do you no longer watch it? And that type of thing. So I'm going to give my two cents because I am definitely in the boat of I used to watch the pro scene religiously. And I no longer really do. And if I ever do, I kind of have it on my up my second monitor muted. And I'm never really fully paying attention. Um, which never used to be. I used to, like, you know... I don't know, three, four years ago, League Pro Scene used to be on my main monitor, not the side one, and I used to be listening and just watching it. That's That doesn't happen anymore. Um, so Doublelift obviously started this by making a video, and it was a very well edited and well done video, which I think definitely helped to people's feelings about it. Um, but no, I agree with pretty much everything that Doublelift said. Um, Doublelift was basically stating that in the current state of League, that they were doing so many patches, it's hard for League to kind of stay kind of, let's say, a good game, more or less, in a number of aspects. So when you're changing the game every few weeks with patches, one, the pros have to constantly practice the new stuff, which basically gives the pros no free time to do anything. And in a weird way, they're kind of like slaves to the game because they have to practice so much. They're scrimming 12 hours a day, five or six days a week. So of course they can't stream or of course they can't really have a normal life, uh, which isn't healthy. Um, so there's that. And then not only for the pros that regular patches aren't very good, also for the normal League of Legends player, it's not very good. If you take the average League player, which a lot of you may be, or a lot of you may be a little bit above the average League player, the average League player is a dude that works or is in school, that comes home and plays maybe one or two games a League, maybe a day and maybe not even every day, maybe every other day. That is the average league player. And then you're changing the game every few weeks to a person that is working or in school that isn't going to be able to keep up with everything. That isn't very healthy because then that person is getting further and further behind the more patches that occur. And obviously this, I think, problem has been blown out more this year than any other year because Riot did announce at the beginning of the year, season eight, we're going to be doing a, a more frequent patches, bigger changes throughout the season. And I do think Riot is going to be slowing that down. And I, yeah, I, I agree. I think that was a massive mistake on their part. Let the, you know, um, Doublelift in his video explained that back in the day, the meta didn't change basically at all. There weren't many patches and it was like, okay, this is just how it's going to be until a player worked out something different. And they worked out how to beat the meta. And then that's how the meta shifted. It wasn't a patch that changed the meta. It was a player innovating and becoming basically a legend by beating what everybody thinks is the best way to play. And that is where Faker emerged as a legend. That's where Insect emerged. That's where Mad Life emerged. Was these players who went, ah, screw the norm. I'm going to do my thing and it's going to be better than the norm. And that hasn't happened for years. I can't think of a pro... Again, I don't follow the pro scene that much, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But I can't think of a pro in the last three years that has become like that legend status of kind of revolutionizing the meta and making everybody follow them, apart from the ones that are already legends, like Faker and stuff. Like, they are already there. They did it years ago. And I think that is probably due to the patch issue. And I think Riot has come out and said they're going to slow that down, which I think is really good. Um, but again, it might be a little bit too late for some people. Again, I, I am aware that the, the game numbers may have dipped a bit, and that can be for a number of reasons. And I think there are several. One, fatigue. Everybody's going to have fatigue with a video game, especially, you know, when you're playing a game for many years. Again, gaming culture has changed. You know, when I was growing up, and I'm only 24, you didn't have one main game when I grew up. You played several, and you got bored of something, you moved on. Where game culture nowadays wants you to have a main game. World of Warcraft wants you as their main game. League wants you as their main game. Dota wants you as their main game. And they're all their design features go towards rewarding you for playing more. Therefore, you need it to be your main game. Uh, that never used to be a thing. So game culture has changed and that does come with fatigue. Is People just get a little bit burnt out every now and then. And especially this type of burning out and fatigue and kind of stopping playing happens when something relatively controversial happens. And the current meta is, whether you love it, 
that's fine. But it is kind of controversial. There are a lot of people out there that dislike the current meta of mages in the bot lane, the funnel strat. It's, it's very much split the community in that way. And if you're on the tail end of, oh god, you know, ranked isn't going great for me, I've played this game a really long time, and then this type of meta happens and you're not a massive fan, you bet your bottom dollar this is the time that a lot of people are going to be taking a break or even quit the game as they're kind of like out of, okay, yeah, screw this. If this is the way League's going, I'll see you later. And they may come back, you know, sure. Riot has announced and they are, you know, in this current patch, they have nerfed the funnel strat and stuff. So potentially they are seeing like what they did. And, you know, I'll just say now we will talk about it later. But if there is a funnel strat on the LCS, the pro scene, and I'm, if I've got it on my second monitor, even if it's on my second monitor, I turn off the stream if it's a funnel strat in League of Legends. Uh, for, one, for a couple of reasons. One, I have no intention of watching that strategy at all. I'm not interested. And secondly, to make a point, if they are doing that strategy and it's the most strongest thing to do that's fine it's not the pro's fault but it's a message to riot oh your viewership is going down because a stupid strategy is being played stop that strategy and that's just from my personal opinion and that's what i've done and it does seem that you know it is getting fixed and obviously you know obviously i haven't made that fix happen at all uh but maybe the community as a whole with their distaste for it has kind of made that happen um so yeah, like I said, so player numbers going down is fatigue, is the current changes and the current meta, and also rivalry, other video games. You never can ignore that. And I think that is something that Riot has actually struggled with for the past few months, is that for the last, you know, eight to nine years after League's first year of being a game, League has been, and still is, by the way, the biggest video game in the world. Uh, it still is the vid the biggest, but it's basically been unmatched. It's had the like a lot of the, the biggest stream numbers. It's had a lot of YouTube views. Well, now if you go on Twitch, uh, on average, League isn't the highest viewed game. If you go on YouTube, League is like the fifth or sixth most uh, watched game on YouTube. Uh, so not even in the top three anymore. It is slowly, if you want to say, becoming irrelevant in that world it's still very much amazing in player numbers but in the world of content creation so this obviously affects me it is slowing down and i think that is where league has kind of gone up oh, whoops um because i think they may have got a bit lazy over the years like being the top dog is great and like you have you know you know you're the top of everybody but sometimes if you don't look down and kind of go, what's happening down there, people can catch you off guard. And a game like Fortnite, whether you love or hate it, they did stuff well. You know, from the beginning of that game, they took a few uh, content creators, you know, Ninja being one of them, and used them really hard for marketing, used them amazingly well to kind of, you know, target their audience and build their audience. And one, it benefited the game. And secondly, it benefited that content creator. Well, League has never done that. Uh, I will say there are some background things going on now with Riot, with me, and other YouTubers. Uh, mainly only UK YouTubers from what I can tell. But, like, they're doing it now. Where they should have been doing it three or four years ago, probably. But they're doing it probably as a reaction to, oh, this is probably a good idea. You know, it's working that way. Um, so, yeah. That is basically it. I think that's why we've seen a little bit of a dip with League at the moment. But they are looking to fix a few things. And obviously, if you guys, uh, and I've seen it in the comment section, uh, League at the moment is in a, in a massive swing of wanting new players. Um, this isn't secret information. If you go on, apparently, and my audience said, there are a lot of League of Legends adverts running on YouTube videos. Even if, you know, this very video, there could be a League of Legends advert running. Uh, which obviously I can't control, but they are putting a lot of money into advertising. On their YouTube channel recently, they uploaded three different advertisements just on the YouTube video and uh, um, YouTube channel itself. And again, a lot of the, the features in game is about the new player, is the new tutorial system to make it a little bit easier. Uh, the new rank season uh, less, next season with the implemented or wanted changes, they're a lot more casual than it's ever been. You know, splitting into three different um, seasons per year rather than one big one, it's less daunting the placement game matches you'll get to know what rating you're probably going to get or minimum rank you're going to get after the first game so you make yourself less nervous um the role selecting you can narrow yourself so you don't have to be as broad in skill you can narrow your skill all of it's about being a little bit more casual and easier to pick up which is again directly for new players uh so that's not a secret and again i don't blame riot for wanting new players that's fine um, but then my final point of why I think the player base may be struggling or you're seeing more people leave and stuff like that is the game's age in relative to its player base. 
So when League of Legends was new, and in, in its first, let's say, three or four years, when it most likely picked up the, the bulk of its player base, well, those people grow up. You know, if you're saying the average player, and I, I believe a few years ago, the statistic was the average League of Legends player was 16 years old. That may have changed. I actually imagine it has. I imagine that's got older. Because if you take the average League player of 16 years old when they picked up the game in Season 2, well, they're, not, they're no longer six, uh, 16. They're 22 years old. That means they're in college or they got a full-time job. Hell, some of them people are going to have kids. Like, when you're... The older your game gets the older your player base gets, your natural player base, and they're busier. They're doing more stuff. They don't have time for as many video games. And that is, again, why they're most likely looking for new players. And that is also why they may be pitching the game to younger people, because the younger people have more free time versus the people who have jobs, kids, that type of thing. All of this makes sense. Again, I might be able to just, like, kind of articulate it a bit more, because I did a, a game design degree, and we did game cycles in one of my um, modules in my degree. And it's just natural. Like, this is just common stuff. So there's that. Now let's get into the pro scene, and this is actually the, the, the thing that I'm more interested in, in you guys, my audience, to let me know in the comment section what do you think. Why are the, the, the view numbers going down in the pro scene? And they are significantly going down, by the way. You know, EU LCS gets above 40,000 views sometimes, um, you know, between 40 and 60. And obviously they do have a few other language streams, but they don't really get above 5,000. So generally speaking, the EU LCS doesn't really get above 70 to 80,000 views. Uh, North American LCS does get over 100,000 views, but it doesn't really top out much over that. Um, and again, this is worrying because a few years ago, LCS was getting over 200,000 views per week, um, you know, without really struggling, you know, and, you know, in them big rival matches, way more, like 250,000. They don't get anywhere near that now. It's what happened? Um, so a few things I think that happened, and this is what Doublelift also spoke about, is the patch volume basically has made it so pros no longer have a community presence. Um, you know, Doublelift does stream a bit. But basically what I think a major problem is, the main reason I used to watch uh, pro play, and you guys again can, can chip in, is because I cared, surprisingly. But I cared about the people that I supported, and I was just generally interested in how the league is doing. But I used to be a massive TSM fan, because I didn't support TSM, I supported the personalities inside TSM. You know, Dyrus, Reginald, Odd One... Those are my old dudes. I've got signed posters back in the day from those guys. Those who I supported those individuals who so happened to be on TSM. They've all faded away, which obviously is natural. But there's no big replacement in personality. Like, I'm not connected to any pros. Probably apart from Doublelift, because he's back, you know, one of the old guys. And I do support Team Liquid. I don't want them to do well because of Doublelift. Uh, again, personality, I think, is a major reason why people support different teams. And I've stopped supporting TSM because of their bot lane. I am not a fan of that bot lane in personality-wise. I've never liked how they come across in interviews or anything. So I stopped supporting TSM as soon as they picked up that bot lane. Because, again, I don't think... Maybe pro plays a little bit different to um, football or rugby or American football. Because, yeah, sure, in those sports, you may support the club and you may not necessarily like all the players. Where I think it may be a bit different in in gaming because it's a lot more personal, uh, personable and it, well, it's supposed to be. And, yeah, I don't like two personalities in a team now. I'm going to stop supporting that team. I've never had a massive connection to an organization. It's more the players. And with Doublelift mentioning the patch frequency is making them scrim more, none of these players are streaming. None of them are making content. None of them are really getting involved with the community. So why do we care about those pros? We don't. And that is why I personally have lost interest in the pro scene is because I just don't care about any of the pros. I don't know them. I don't want them to win i don't want them to lose but it's it's just neutral so i lose my interest if i you know hopefully if the patches slow down it will give the pros more spare time to maybe stream uh have that personality and that would be a big deal like i've even thought that riot may like what they could do is do something extra with the pros like have you know they've got their get their talk shows and they have the pros doing that scion circuit you know trying to get i think that's only nalcs um but do something like that, but maybe even like, I know it sounds crazy, but have like a game show or a talk show, like something official that we can get to know the pros more than what there currently is. Because there's basically nothing. And I'll say America does a lot better job at doing it than EU. EU has been always rubbish at doing it. 
Um, but I think that's also a big reason is that that is why I personally stopped getting interested is because I just don't care about the pros. None of them stream. None of them make content. I'm not interacting with basically any of them. You know, I used to have several of the pros and I still do on my friends list in League of Legends. On Skype, I've got quite a lot of them. I've spoken to a lot of them. But you know, the ones I use, I've spoken to, they've all retired. They're all the old pros. I don't have, like, personally, I don't have a connection to any of the new ones. And I know that's obviously a personal, but if you guys can kind of, you know, what do you think? You know, do you care about any of the pros? It'll be interesting because, again, that's why definitely I've tuned off, but that's just me. And then my final point, and again, this I would say actually goes more to European LCS, is I don't like majority of the casting team. Not personal. I'm sure they're all amazing people and friendly and great. Even my friend Fox has now become a semi-caster for them. And I think Fox is good and I think he'll get better over time. And I try to actually listen to his uh, casting more than all of them. Uh, but that's about it. Like, Medic is all right. Um, but I don't enjoy the commentating style of EU LCS at all. Um, NA LCS, I'd say, is better. Um, I, I'd say they've got a lot better personalities. And again, that's the word, personalities. I actually like the people behind the casting. And again, it might be just because they've been around longer. Um, so I'm used to them more. But for me, that's another reason that I basically have EU LCS on 99% of the time on mute. And I probably have North American LCS probably about 75% of the time on mute. I don't know. It's just become a little bit boring to me. And again, recently I did speak about what they could do for new players if you did want to write to implement that. Couple things. First thing is, why haven't they put the, the pro LCS stream implemented in the client? I don't know why. And actually give you a reward for watching. You know, Counter-Strike Go do that. If you tune in and you connect your uh, your um, CSGO account to Twitch or whatever, you'll get given a crate or a key for tuning into one of their tournaments. You could do that with League of Legends. Hey, you watched LCS for two hours last night on the client. Have a key for a Hextech box. It doesn't cost them any money. It just promotes their game, promotes the pro play, gets more people watching, helps the sponsor uh, targets more. Because trust me, they'll have sponsor targets for their view uh, for their streams. Do that, and then secondly, have a beginner friendly stream every single week. Have a beginner friendly stream that is advertised as we are beginner friendly. That doesn't just commentate and says what's going on and says the ability name like everybody's supposed to know what's going on. Have somebody that is explaining it. Slow down you know, kind of take it easy. I think that also will be good because it's daunting. You know, again, I've had some conversations with rioters recently and hopefully what I'm saying here isn't breaking NDA, but all of us can probably agree that League of Legends is a very daunting game to new players. There's 142 characters. There's crazy amount of items. All the champions have different interactions with each other. There's different combos. There's so much in this game that I imagine for a new player now, it's like, I can't get into that game. Where if you do a new player stream, that will help a lot. Especially if you have it straight there on the client going, hey, you're a new player, watch this stream. So that's just my two cents. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about the current state of League of Legends. You know, have you had a break? Are you stopping to play? Are you okay with everything? Uh, are you watching the pro scene? Have you stopped watching? If you are watching, you know, why do you still care? Like all that stuff I'd be very much inter interested to know. Because it, it seems to be quite a big topic at the moment in the community. And again, for somebody like me who's a content creator... Again, one thing to say, views are a little bit down this month, but that's just July. Everybody's views are down a little bit this month, probably apart from a uh, Professor Akali with the new rework. Um, but, you know, seeing League of Legends go on the, the gaming list on YouTube and actually seeing League of Legends itself dropping in position of how popular it is on YouTube, that's a little bit worrying for somebody who does full-time YouTube as a League of Legends YouTuber. So uh, yeah, that's going to be it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Throw a like on it. If you liked the discussion, leave the comment, leave all that stuff down below. I will try to read every single one and I will reply and I'll probably heart a few of them if I do agree with them and it's good conversation. But that's going to be it. Like, subscribe. See you guys next time. See ya.